how we want him to, but he does answer prayers. Yes. I'm just so, so grateful for that. So, can we just stand and pray together? Yes. Lord, we just come to you this morning, Lord, for all of these multitude of needs, Lord, that we mention and those that, that, that we know of in our own hearts, Lord God. God, I pray you touch Lisa's back, Lord, this morning, God. Lord, you healed the woman with the bad back. God, I know that you can touch Lisa this morning. Lord, if you can just reach right down where she is, Lord. Put your hand on her back, God, and let the virtue flow, Lord. And God, I pray, Lord, for Michael this morning, Lord, that you just raise him up out of that bed, Lord Jesus, God. Give him appetite, Lord Jesus, God, and return him to normal, Lord, that he can be a witness for you, Lord God. God, I pray, Lord, for Libby's family, Lord, that you would comfort them, Lord, in this time of need, Lord. God, I pray for Carly's family, Lord, that you would comfort them, Lord, in this time of need, Lord God. And Lord, we just need you, Lord God. I pray, Lord, for all of the needs that have been brought to us this week, Lord God. Father, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord, in Jesus' mighty name, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Have your way, Lord. Lord, we pray for those that are watching this morning, God, that you will reach where they are, Lord. Lord, you are everywhere at the same time, God, and I know that you hear every prayer, Lord God. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Have your way this morning. In Jesus' name. Praise God. Praise God. I don't know about you, but I just want to brag on Jesus a little bit this morning. He's been so good to me, and I know, know that you want to brag on him, too, and you came to receive something from us, the Lord this morning. I'm just believing that that He is going to bless all of us this morning. Praise the Lord. Sometimes you wonder if it's going to be the right message for the right time. But the Lord uh, took me actually yesterday to Mark chapter five, and I just feel like the Lord orchestrated uh, orchestrated it all this morning. And and uh, uh, if you brought your Bible, you might need it this morning because we're not. Don't have the overhead, but um, uh, or you can listen to me. I can read it to you. <laughs> and uh, you know, first of, first of all, I believe that He ordered our steps to be right here in the house of God, or even watching online. And uh, I, I continually pray for Brother Brian uh, that's at home watching. And, and um, I, I believe that this message is just for you. So. Will you just pray for God's anointing this morning and just lean in to receive what God has for you this morning? In Mark chapter 5, starting with verse 25. And a certain man with, uh, and a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, she came and prep in the press behind him and touched his garment, for she said, If I may but touch his clothes, I will be made whole. Hallelujah. What is going on with these clothes? Are they polo garments? Are they Hollister? Are they Ralph Lauren? You know, what is going on with these clothes that she felt she had to touch these clothes? And I don't think and absolutely know that it's not so much about the clothes. But she said, if I can just get close to him enough to touch the hem of his garment, I will be made whole. So what's going on here? Are these magical clothes? You know, are they magical garments? Um, um, Mark 6, 5, 6 and 53. And again, what's going on with these clothes? And, they, and when they passed over, they came to the land of Gennesaret and drew to the shore. And when they were come up out of the ship straightway, they knew him and ran through the whole region about and began to carry about in beds that were sick 
where they heard that he was. And whithersoever he entered into villages, into cities and countries, they, they laid the sick in the streets and they besought him that he might, that they might touch, if it were, but the border of his garment, is what it says. And, and as many as touched him were made whole. Hallelujah. Somebody say hallelujah. 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 So what is going on with these clothes? You know, you, you ever think about this? You know, they, they, that they could get so close to him that if they could just touch his clothes, that they were healed and they were not just healed, but they were made whole as if it never happened. And, and, and uh, I'm going to say that, you know, in, in Isaiah 53 and 2, it says that, that Christ isn't going to have any comeliness. There won't be any beauty about him that we should desire him. So I think to myself, you know, here is Jesus in the crowd. He's, he's not handsome. He's not beautiful. He looks just like everyone else in that day. There's nothing special about the way that he looks. And so I think that maybe, you know, the garments that he has on is the same thing that everyone else is wearing in that day. Uh, like in our day, you know, if you weren't in the house of God, you'd probably have on a pair of jeans or, or shorts, right? <laughs> But mostly blue jeans everywhere you look is blue jeans, you know, and and uh, but there's nothing special about it, you know. Uh, uh, the same thing everyone else has on. Uh, nothing special about the fabric or the collar. But I want to present a thought this morning that the only reason, the only reason there were there was healing in those garments, and the only reason that people wanted to get so close to him that they wanted to touch. His garments was because they knew that they would be healed and they knew they would be made whole. It wasn't because of what he wore, but it was because God was in it. Hallelujah. You know, God was in it. And when God is in it, everything changes. Everything changes. If you want to bless your life, if you want your life to be blessed, God has to be in it. Get God in your life. You know, if you want God to bless your ministry, God has to be in it. If you want God to bless your home, God has got to be in your home. Hallelujah. If you want God to bless your business, God's got to be in your business. Hallelujah. He has to be in it. So this morning, I want to preach this message. I'm just calling when God is in it. Can you say when God is in it? Hallelujah. I remember that I was a mess. You ever been a mess? <laughs> I almost was this morning. I, I come from Walkerton this morning, and I come across 30, and all of a sudden 30 is closed completely. And I had to drive down uh, 15 miles, go across, come back up, went a little farther. There was more road construction on 30, and do the same thing again. And it was like, ah. <laughs> but I made it. Hallelujah. You know, and, but I remember that I was a mess. But when God got in that mess, it changed everything. It changed my life. It changed how I how I see things. It changed how you know I, I look at situations, how I react to situations. It just changed everything. And and maybe you can remember when your life was was a mess. Uh, uh, who you were before that you got saved, and uh, that very moment that you invited Jesus to come into your heart in an altar of prayer. And into your life that it literally changed everything. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You became what the Bible calls a new creature. A new creature. You never knew you were a creature, did you? <laughs> I mean, you know, God just blessed you at that moment at the altar. And he continues to bless you throughout your life, throughout your serving him. And so I want God in it, Sister Tracy. I want God in my life. I, um. I like to read. Anybody here like to read? I like to read. Uh, making time to read is another thing, right? <laughs> I like to read, and when I was younger, I, I read a lot more than I than I, I do lately other than the Word of God. Uh, and there's some really, really good books out there, um, some good authors, but of all of the books that, that have ever been written, there is one book that is available that stands out. Hallelujah. Do you know why it stands out? Because God is in it. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. Because God is in it. Praise God. You know, he is in it. This book is a living book. It's a living word. It's breathing. It, it, it will give you breath when you're out of breath. Hallelujah. You know, and, and uh, you know, the, those, there are people that, you know, describe the Bible um, these days like, well, we believe that, that uh, the word of God it was an inspired in the original was inspired in the original language and King James Version is the accurate translation for the text, but that's not really strong enough for me. This isn't just a good translation, hallelujah, of God's word. You know, this is not just a good rendering or a good copy of God's word. This is the word of God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And, and the more that you get into the Word of God, the more that you turn the pages and you begin to read, uh, uh, and you read in Joel, like he said, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, hallelujah, all flesh, you know. And the more that you, you can find, you know, things that cause you to realize that, that this Bible could have only been written by God. You know, everything in, in a timeline in God's Word, you know, and... Uh, if you you can tell it's all it can only have been written by God, you know, and take for instance the number six in the Bible What does the number six represent? Does anybody know? The number six represents man It's the number of man and in the the sixth book of the Bible anybody know what the sixth book of the Bible is? Genesis, Exodus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, Joshua <laughs> Joshua, and, and uh, uh, the sixth book of the Bible, um, Joshua is the name of the man, okay? In the New Testament, the sixth book of the Bible, what is the sixth book of the Bible in the New Testament? Romans. Yes, Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, Acts, Romans. And so uh, that... That is, if, if you go to Romans chapter 6, what, what is uh, uh, the 6th chapter, and then we go to the 6th verse, so Romans 6 and 6, and read out loud the 6th word in that verse, Mr. Tracy, when you get to it. Romans 6 and 6 is the 6th yeah. word. Man, you just can't make that up, can you? You know, uh, it's the number of man. Our God is an awesome God. Hallelujah. Our God is an awesome God. And knowing this, that our old man was crucified, reading that verse, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve in sin. You couldn't make it up if you tried. The sixth book in the New Testament, the sixth chapter, the sixth verse, the sixth word in that verse is man. There is something different about the word of God, you know, and how that God, uh, you know, put it all together. And in, in Luke chapter 2, the nation that we live in stands out because God has been in this nation. Amen. Yeah. It, even, even in spite of what it looks like. God is here. Hallelujah. He is here. Uh, there, and there is a little country in the Middle East that for some reason it continues to exist. And that's because God is in it. In Luke chapter 2, um, I don't know about at your house, but at our house, we love Christmas. When you think of Luke chapter 2, you think of Christmas uh, because it has a Christmas story. Um, and and we just we just love to celebrate the birth of Jesus Christ. It's not so much about the decorations. Well, maybe a little bit, you know, and, and, and or the caroling. Well, maybe a little bit, you know, and the gifts, you know, everybody likes gifts, you know. But no, it's because we get to celebrate the birth of our Savior. And to us, you know, who are believers who have him living in our hearts. It, it brings us excitement, you know, it brings us excitement. And um, so, you know, I celebrate Christmas because God is in it. Hallelujah. And the earlier, it seems like earlier and earlier, people celebrate Christmas and it won't be long here. You'll be seeing Christmas in Walmart, you know. <laughs> it's July. 
middle of July, almost the end of July. And, and uh, you know, some people don't like that, that, that it's early and people start celebrating early, but we're celebrating God is in it. Amen. If it causes people to think about God, you know, you know, then then let's do it. Let's celebrate the birth of Christ, you know, and and I celebrate it because God is in it. In Luke chapter two, I read a little bit of it. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign to you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God. And saying, glory to God in the highest, and on earth, peace, goodwill toward men. Now, there is really nothing special at all about the city of Bethlehem. If you went there now, you would not even think it was the place where Jesus was born. Uh, uh, in fact, in the, in the Old Testament, Ma uh, Micah 5 and 2, it says that Bethlehem is the least of the thousands of cities in Judah. The least of it. Um, there's nothing special about that city. It's under Palestinian authority. You wouldn't want to live there. So, and then, as we just read about the manger that he was born in, there's nothing special about that manger. The manger is used, a manger is used to feed animals. It's basically a wooden box that they put the feet in, but that's what it is. And so there's nothing special about the manger. But what made it special was that God was in it. Hallelujah. God was in it. You know, and because God was in it, it changed everything all over the world. Hallelujah. You know, and so when God gets in it, it becomes a spectacle. Praise the Lord. You know, it becomes a spectacle. And, and, uh, uh, it, it becomes a sight to behold. You know, um, it, there's nothing more beautiful than seeing a, a manger scene displayed somewhere, you know, and, and, and for me, my eyes go right to the manger, you know, and, and, but because of what it represents, and still, you know, it still represents the birth of Jesus Christ. And um, because in the city, in a city that was worse, worthless, and in a manger that was worse, worthless, it was special, and it was a spectacle, because Jesus was in it. And because Jesus was in it, angels appeared in heaven, and a heavenly hope, you know, uh, joined in with them, saying, glory to God in the highest, you know, and, and the shepherds, you know, they left where they were, and they came glorifying and praising the Lord, and the wise man, uh, came from halfway across the world, way before there were ever any jets or airplanes, you know, uh, just to come to this place. And if that wasn't enough, he was born of a virgin. Talk about a spectacle, you know, a sight to behold. And, and uh, I, I've seen, and you probably have too, seen things that I never thought I would see because God was in it. Because God was in it. I've seen God do things that, that never would have happened if people that were praying didn't have God in them. Hallelujah. You know, and, and I've done things that I never even thought I'd ever do, you know, because God lives in me. That's what it is. And you've done things you never dreamed that you would do when you were, when you were growing up or, or before you gave your heart to the Lord. But he just, he gives us a boldness. You know, he gives us a... A fire inside our bones, hallelujah, you know, that, and, and he gives us probably greater love than we would ever, ever have known before we asked Jesus into our heart, you know, for other people. He said, love one another as I have loved you. And so in the stable, I see a spectacle. And, and I remind you of another story in Mark chapter 2, and 
when Jesus came over to Capernaum and, and, and remember this phrase, he, he said, and he was in the house. It says, and he was in the house. People were trying to get to him. It was crowded, so they started tearing open the roof uh, just to lower these people down in that, uh, uh, to where Jesus was, where they could get a healing, praise the Lord. That is the kind of spectacle that I'm talking about, when God is in it. You know, a, a sight to behold when God is in it. I heard of a preacher that, that used really educated and really big words, and he preached, and he preached, and he preached, and, and yet it was just dead. It was dry. There was nothing. It was awful. You know, and, and, uh, and then this country boy gets up there as redneck as he could be, you know, and, and he starts preaching. Uh, uh, he couldn't pronounce the words kind of like I can't sometimes, you know, couldn't pronounce the words, uh, couldn't pronounce the names, and, and he got things all mixed up. Lazarus ended up in hell and the rich man in paradise, you know, in his sermon, but yet nine people got saved. Why? Because God was in it. Hallelujah. God was in it, you know, and I would rather have God in it than any amount of education. I would rather have God, hallelujah. You know, um, Luke chapter 8, verses 22 through 25. So in the stable, we have a, a spectacle. But in the ship, when God gets in it, there is safety. Yes, there was nothing special about this ship, Sister Carol, uh, it, it's made out of the same wood that other ships are made out of. There's nothing special about the sailors. Uh, they, there's nothing special about the sea, the water that the ship was in. Nothing special about the storm. The same wind and waves as, as other storms. The same rain in it as, as other, other rain storms, you know. So what is different about this storm in this ship? is that God is in it, praise the Lord. And when God is in the ship, there is safety, yeah. praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There have been many, many sleepless nights where there was nothing that could comfort me, nothing that could make me safe. But when I just open the word of God, hallelujah, and, and, and it, it almost feels like, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night and there's, something in your heart and on your heart and, and you've opened the word of God and it's almost like his arms just wrap all the way around you. You know, and you can feel it. And it's because God is in it. No one else around. Just the word of God and the power of God. And, and when God gets in it, there is safety. So let's read it. Now it came to pass on a certain day, they went into a ship. He went into a ship with his disciples and he said unto them, let us go over to the other side of the lake, and they launched forth. But as they sailed, he fell asleep. And there came down a storm of wind on the lake, and they were filled with water and were in jeopardy. Now, just because that you have Jesus in the ship with you doesn't mean that you're exempt from storms, does it? You know, we find that we're, we go through storms, but it does mean that you will stay safe. Praise the Lord. They say, verse 24, and they came to him and they awoke him saying, Master, Master, we perish. And then he arose and he rebuked the wind and, and the raging water and they ceased and there was calm. Hallelujah. There was calm. Have you ever been in a storm and, and in your life and, and it was like Jesus just snapped his fingers and everything went calm. Hallelujah. I remember Noah. He was building an ark in Genesis chapter 37. And the last thing that Noah, uh, I, last thing that God said to Noah before he gets into the ark, he said, come thou into the ark. Come thou into the ark. He, he, uh, uh, he didn't say go into the ark, did he? He said, come thou into the ark. And he said that because he was already there. He was already in it, and, you know, he was already in the ark, and, and, and you don't hear much from God, you know, during the rains and the flooding, but just because you don't hear, you know, from God 
that, and just because you can't see him there doesn't mean that he is not in your situation, does it? He is there, you know, and so he said, come thou into the ark. And then when when the flood waters went down and 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 they they landed on on ground, uh, uh, the newer translation of the of the Bible get this wrong. If you read the Bible, you 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 catch on to these things, you know. And uh, uh, they say that he said, "Come thou out of the ark," but that's not what he said. It, if you know. He had said that, it would have meant that he was outside of the ark. But he said, go forth. You know, and, and and so it's like, I'm here and I tell you to go somewhere. You know, I don't tell you to come here when I'm trying to get you out there. Right? You know, and, and so that tells me that God was there in the ark all the time. He was there all the time, you know. And just because that you can't see him or you can't feel him doesn't mean that he is not there. He, in every situation that you go through, he said, I promise I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And that ark was safety, wasn't it? You know, it was shelter from the storm. And what about that fiery furnace? There was nothing special about that fiery furnace. Um, uh, they were in the fiery furnace, and when they got out, it says that they didn't even smell like smoke. So what was different about it? Well, Nebuchadnezzar, when Nebuchadnezzar looked in there, there was a fourth man in the furnace. And, and he said, that man looks like the son of God. You know, and, and uh, so what was different about that fiery furnace was that God was in the furnace. Hallelujah. You know, and so it doesn't matter what we are going through, what furnace that we are stuck in. If God is in it, you know, you are going to make it out. Hallelujah. Yes. You're going to make it to the other side. Praise the Lord. If you're in the ship, praise God. You know, and so in Luke chapter 24, starting with verse 1. Now, upon the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulchre bringing the spices which they had prepared, and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered it and found not the body of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, it's in the, it's in the tomb that we find that our sins can be forgiven. Amen? Because he rose again. We find that, you know, we can be justified. We can be sanctified and glorified. All because he was in there, you know, and, and no, God is not there any anymore. He is alive, as we sang, alive forevermore, and he lives in our hearts today. And I mean, I, I have God in my life, and you have God in your life, and we can all agree that our life is better because he is in our life. Yes. Praise the Lord. He gives us yes. peace in, in the most unpeaceful situations. Uh, he he. Our joy doesn't go very far, does it? You know, when we begin to think of the goodness of the Lord, it makes us want to shout hallelujah, you know, praise the Lord. And, and, uh, and so, you know, this morning, everything that we have, everything that happens in our life is because God is in it. Praise God. You know, and so it makes it better, you know. And so, you know, is God in it? Is God, is God when it comes to your children, is God there? You know, uh, we should be coming to this altar every single service, you know, and begging God to be present in their lives, you know, begging him to be present in our own lives, you know, and, and we should be welcoming him into our lives. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving in your heart and enter his courts with praise. Hallelujah. You know, and so, you know, the best thing this morning that anyone can do is to accept Jesus into their hearts, praise the Lord. And and you know, let let's let's just remember this week, you know, that God, I don't want to go anywhere. I don't want to do anything. I don't even want to pick up my keys, God, if you're not in it, Lord. But God, I just want you to be in everything that I do. Because when God is in it, everything changes. 
it becomes a spectacle. So I want you to leave here today and go be a spectacle. Hallelujah. <laughs> For Jesus, you know, for Jesus, you know, uh, invite God to get in the car with you. Invite him to go to work with you. Invite him to go to that appointment with you. And God will be with you and he changes everything. Everything. A lot of people just go about their day and they go through things and they don't even think about God. You know, sometimes it's even believers. But God wants us to remember that he is there. That he hasn't left us even when we can't see him. He hasn't forsaken us, even when we can't hear him, you know. And, and we're maybe saying, God, where are you? Or you look back at his word, he said, I'll never leave you, nor forsake you. So he's there. But don't ever say that. All right, where are you, God? Because he's there somehow, somewhere. God will get the glory, amen? God will get the glory. Hallelujah. Lord, I just come to you, Lord. This morning, God, and I thank you, God, for your word. I thank you, Lord, that when we look at our lives, God, that you are in it. When we look at our church, Lord, you are in it, Lord God. God, in our neighborhoods, Lord, that you are in it, Lord, because you place us strategically where we are, God, that we can reach out and minister to those around us, Lord God, and let your light so shine before men, God. And Lord, I pray, God, that that you would just, just open our eyes to the fact that we are your vessel, God. Lord, we're no longer our own, but we are yours, God. Lord, it's no longer I that live, but Christ that lives within me. And God, I just thank you, Lord Jesus, God, that you are here this morning, Lord. I thank you, Lord, we can feel your presence, God. I thank you, Lord, for every answered prayer, God. I thank you, Lord, I'm saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah this morning. God, we thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for being with us today, Lord. Thank you for moving things out of the way, God, that we could be in your house today, Lord. I thank you for touching Sister Tracy, Lord God, and, and taking the headache away, Lord, that she had, God, in Jesus' name, Lord God. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And I know you're answering the other prayer requests that we prayed for this morning. In Jesus' name.